All right, we're rolling. Um, yesterday in example nine, we were writing equations of these exponential functions of the form b to the x power. That's the simplest form out there, b to the x. That's when the a value, the y-intercept is one. All we needed was one ordered pair. Uh, that wasn't the y-intercept, and we had one. We plugged it in, we solved the base, and then we rewrote it. You're not always going to have them of that form because your y-intercept is not always going to be one. So sometimes we can have a y-intercept that is something other than one. So in general, we call it a. So in this section, we are using a step up general form that is that f of x or y equals a times b to the x. Now, because there are two unknowns, we have a and b, two unknowns. We're going to need two points. You always need as many equations or points as you have unknowns, okay? Because I want to end up with an a and a b value so that I have my function as a function of x. Well, we're given two points, okay? So let's take a look at this one. This one is not graphed. We could graph it if we want, real quickly. 0, 4 would be right here. And then 522 would be up here. So would this be growth or decay? Growth. It would be growth, right? It would be some type of exponential growth. So I know my base is going to be bigger than 1. That's all I really know. But I want to figure out what, what, what the base actually is. And I want to figure out what A is as well. Now, does anyone recognize anything special about the point 0, 4? Anything special about it? Was it in an Adam Sandler movie? That would make it special, right? I don't think it was. Zero, four, zero. Let me point out again, it's zero. It's the y-intercept. Yeah, that's, that's what we're looking for. This is the y-intercept. So what do we know about four then, if it's the y-intercept? Isn't four one of these two variables over here? Which one of those A or B is your y-intercept? A. Remember when we talked about exponential? It has to grow out of some seeding value, some starting value. That's going to be what A is. Okay, It's your all vertical dilation factor. What do you get when you plug in a 0 for x here? What's B to the 0 power? B raised to the 0 power. Zero. No. No. What? What? Louder? One. one. What's B to the 0 power? One. What's one times A? It's an honors class. A. But it's first period as well. B to the zero is one. One times A is A. So the y-intercept is A. Okay? So we already know that A is four. So I could take my general equation, y equals A times B to the X. I'm going to use Y instead of F of X, if you're okay with that. And I can go ahead and say Y now must equal four times B to the X. So I have one of them already found. Now, if you didn't recognize that as the y-intercept, and I know we struggled with that a little bit this morning already, you could have done this. Here's the other way. You could have just said at the point 0, 4, and you could have actually plugged it in. You could have said 4 equals a times b to the 0 power. Okay, this is doing it formally. Now you would say that's a times 1, which is a, and you would get a equals 4. So y now equals 4 times b to the x. But you could avoid this right here by just recognizing that it's the special point zero 04, and you can go straight to y equals uh, 4 times b to the x. Okay, now we're going to take the other ordered pair. We're going to say at the point 5, 22. And we're going to plug it into this version now. Since we already know what a is, we're going to use that version. So we get 22 equals 4 times b to the fifth power. Plugging in a 5 for x and a 22 for y. And guess what we get to do now? We have one equation with one unknown. Now all we got to do is solve for b. So let's divide both sides by 4, and I get b to the fifth equals 22 fourths. What's another name for 22 fourths? Uh, another name for 22 fourths. Not two elevenths. Not 11 twelfths, 11 tooths, or 11 halves. Yeah, yeah. Now, how do I undo take raising something to the fifth power? Square. Not square it, but 
what would we call it? It's not raising it to the fifth power. It's taking the fifth root of it, right? You can, in general, solve by raising both sides to the reciprocal power. Remember that? We did that earlier in the year. And that works because 5 to the 1 fifth power is going to be 1. So we get b to the first equals, and then 11 halves to the 1 fifth power, that's the same as the fifth root of 11 halves. But I'm going to leave it as 11 halves to the 1 fifth power. You know why? Is 11 halves the perfect fifth root? No. So this is kind of an ugly. This is, this is correct, but this is ugly. Whereas 11 halves to the 1 fifth is less ugly. I'm not going to say it's pretty, if I can spell ugly correctly. It is first period. There we go. All right, now what am I going to do? I'm going to plug this back into this version right here. Our goal is to find A. Our goal is to find B. So here's our equation. We get Y equals 4 times 11 halves to the 1 fifth power all to the X power. All to the X power. Now, I just want to simplify that a little bit. What, what operation do I do right here when I have one-fifth raised to the x power? What do I do with those? I multiply. Good. So our final answer could be this. We could say it's f of x, if you want to call it f of x instead of y. And it's 4 times 11 halves. And instead of one-fifth raised to the x power, we'll just call it to the one-fifth times x power. Or... You could say 4 times 11 halves to the x divided by fifth power, something like that. So that's going to be my exponential growth function. Is, and is 11 halves greater than 1? My base, 11 halves? Yeah, it is. So uh, notice what I did. Instead of letting the base be the fifth root of 11 halves, I actually let the base equal 11 halves, and I absorbed the fifth root into the exponent, which made it a horizontal what? If I multiply x by one-fifth, is that a horizontal stretch or compression? That's a horizontal stretch, good, by a factor of five. So that's what I want to do. I want to make my base a nice rational number. I don't want my base to be an ugly, irrational number. The fifth root of 11 halves, yucky, yucky, gross, gross. Let's keep the 11 halves, and we'll absorb the fifth root into the exponent, where it just becomes a nice little horizontal stretch. Okay. So which version of this is the final answer? I don't care. Either one of those works. Either one of these works. You got it? You know how to do it? Inch by inch, it's a cinch. All right. With that in mind, I want you to do letter B on your own. Very, very similar. It's just different numbers. On your mark, get set, boogie. Do it on your own. If you get stuck, talk to your math buddy. Or look at the previous example. I'll give you a couple minutes to do that. Some of y'all are writing the template equation. That's good. Some of y'all are sketching the points to see if it's growth or decay. That's good. So you kind of know what your base is expected to be. Some of y'all are going right to the direct substitution, which is good. Yep, yep, good. There you go. You're almost there, Lawson. Now you absorb that ugly cube root into the exponent. You're plugged in and you're not turned on. That's like a double whammy. You didn't even write down the example that we just did together? So what have you done over here? What made you doze off in the middle of your problem? Did you get the answer and you stopped, or did you get stuck? Yeah, I got the... 
Where did we get 3.25? 3 over 2? Is that what that is? Yeah. 3 over 2 is 2.25? Yeah, 3 over 2 is good. Did you use a calculator for that? No. We don't we don't really write our bases like that. That's X that's the uh, nine. And is it supposed to be squared? Your work is real sloppy over here. I can't really tell what you're doing. 3 equals 2. Where's your, your 1 half? You're plugging your 1 half in for x. That 1 half is the y value. You're setting your y value. You got your x and y backwards. Right? Be, be very, very deliberate with what you do. Don't rush it. Don't be haphazard. Yeah, so it'll be what? Growth or decay? Decay. So you found your A value? Okay. So now you use this template and you plug in that ordered pair for X and Y and solve for B. Is that right? Yes, now you got to solve for B. All right. Yeah, good. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Are you saying that both of them are a double root right here? Or are you just saying that the one to the third? One third is a double root. Okay. Yeah. Is it? Okay. You're going to watch this video, I'm hoping. <laughs> All right, I'm going to catch up with some of y'all. Uh, I'll do what some of y'all did. Y'all, y'all grafted first, which is good. It kind of, you get your bearings that way. Zero two is going to be right here. And you notice that's your Y intercept. So if you take notice right away, you know, A is equal to two, you know that right away because you got zero comma two. And then you got the point three, one half, which is going to be down here. And because it's lower than two, you know, that this is going to be exponential decay. It's going to be exponential decay. So your base is going to be between zero and one. Now, again, if you didn't know that 2 was the A value, you could take your template, A times B to the X, and you could say at the point zero two, 2, and some of y'all did this, you plug in a 2 for Y, and you plug in a 0 for X. B to the 0 is 1, so you get A equals 2. And then you'd say, so, you plug that in right here, and you get Y equals 2 times B to the X. And it doesn't matter if you use Y or F of X, so the same, right? But now you would use your next point. You would say at the point three comma one half colon. And now you're going to plug that into here. And you're going to have a Y equals a one half equals two times B to the third. And Lane, this is the detail that your work was missing. See how I'm writing this right here with the ordered pair. And I'm saying at with the colon. Yeah, you need to step up your game. All right, now I got to solve for B. So before I can solve for B, I got to solve for B cubed. So I got to divide both sides by two. So we get B cubed equals a half of two, which is one fourth. And then how do I uncube both sides? You cube root both sides. But the cube root of one fourth is ugly, right? The cube root of one fourth is not a perfect cube. So instead, I'm going to raise both sides to the reciprocal power, and I get B equals one fourth to the one third power. Now, that is the same as the cube root of one-fourth, but this is an ugly, irrational base. And we don't want an ugly, irrational base. So we're going to let our base be one-fourth, and we're going to absorb that back into the one-third, back into the exponent. So then I plug that back in here, and I get so. My final answer is f of x, or y, whichever you want to call it, is 2 times one-fourth to the one-third Raised to the x power, you could skip that step and just say it's one third times x because you know you're going to raise the power to the power, you know you're going to multiply. And there's your final answer. Or if you want to make it even more condensed than that, it would be two times one fourth to the x thirds power. So notice the base is a handsome number, it's a rational number, one fourth. Is that exponential decay? 
Is that between zero and one? Yeah, it's between zero and one. So it's going to be decay. And then the one third in the exponent is just going to be a horizontal what by a factor of three? This one third is a horizontal compression or stretch. It's opposite of what it appears. So it's not a third as wide, it's three times wider. So it's a horizontal stretch by a factor of three. But the base is still one fourth. Now, watch what we could do. <clears throat> we get to our final answer, and we're kind of bummed that the answer is the problem's over. But it doesn't have to be. We can play at the end. What do you notice about one fourth and then the a value of two? Can I write both of those as a power of two? I can. So watch me play here. This is for like multiple choice purposes. If I give you an answer choice and that's not an answer choice, you got to be able to play to get to the right answer. So let's see. What can I do? Well, I can write one fourth as two to what power? Off to the side here, one fourth is the same as one over two squared, which is the same as two to the what power if you bring it to the top? Negative two power. So I can write that as two to the negative two. And now I'm raising that power to a power, so I can multiply these two together, and I get two times two to the negative two thirds x. That's my exponent. Two to the negative two thirds x. And now, whoa, look at this. My, I'm multiplying and my bases are the same. What's the rule that says when you're multiplying and the bases are the same? What do you do with the exponents? You add them. So I can get this answer. I can get two to the one minus two thirds x power. And that would still be exponential decay because the negative in front of the x reflects it across the y axis. So there you go, that's another answer. So which, which one is actually correct? Is it this one way up here? Or is it this one down here? Both are correct, yeah. Now if you want, you can even put that into standard transformation form. That would require factoring out the negative two thirds from both terms, but we're not gonna do that, okay? Now we couldn't really do that over here because four and 11 halves, we couldn't write those as the power of the same base. Okay, but we could over here because we had a fourth and a two. All right, any questions on that one? When we do this as a free response question, do I grade your work as well? Or do I just grade your answer? I grade your work, I grade your process as well. So if you're missing any of these steps, any of these notations, you're gonna be losing points, okay? You're not trying as hard as you should. So step up your notation game. No notation, no, no points. <clears throat> All right, now these are the easy ones. A and B are the easy ones. You know why they're the easy ones? Because I gave you the y-intercept. Oops. I gave you the y-intercept. And when I give you the y-intercept, you know the value of A right away. So let's look at some that are actually more fun. I wouldn't say they're harder. They're just more fun. Notice I'm giving you two points again. Are either one of those the y-intercept? No, neither one of those are the y-intercept because it's not zero comma something. But nonetheless, it's still two points. If you want to sketch the graph, negative 2, 10 is going to be up here. And then 2 comma 1 third is going to be down here. Is this ex exponential growth or decay? It should end up being decay. Yeah. But I don't have the y-intercept. Now, when you don't have the y-intercept, you do exactly what we did up here. You just go ahead and say at the point and you plug it in, at the point and you plug it in. So let's do that twice. We'll say at the point, negative 210, colon. That's what I want to see. If this were a free response, I'd look for that. That tells me exactly what you're doing. And if you want to write your template up here to start with, so you can see it, use y instead of f of x. It's a little bit easier. What do I get now when I plug in a negative 2 for x and a 10 for y? I get 10 equals a times b to the negative tooth power. All right, underneath there, I can't really do anything with that. So underneath there, let's do the next one. At the point two comma one third, I plug in and I get one third equals a times b to the tooth power. All 
All right, and now what I've created is the system of equations. Guess what we're doing right now in Algebra 2? We're solving systems of equations. Now, we're not solving exponential equations. We're solving linear equations and quadratic equations, but we are solving systems of equations. And remember, the way that you can solve systems of equations is either by substitution or elimination, or there was a matrix multiplication that we're doing right now, too. We're not going to do that. Okay, here are the rules for solving the system. You can add, subtract, multiply, or divide any multiple of one equation to any multiple of the other equation, and you don't change the solution set. We're going to use the elimination method. Okay, we're going to use the elimination method, and we're going to do it by dividing. The elimination by dividing. So, um, I'm going to call the top equation equation number one, and I'm going to call the bottom equation equation number two. It doesn't matter how you do the division. Let's go ahead and do equation one, and we'll divide it by equation two, and you'll see why this works. Okay? So on the left-hand side, I get 10 divided by one-third, and on the right-hand side, I get AB to the negative second divided by AB to the positive second. Everyone see what I did there? I did the left side, the top divided by the bottom. I did the right side, the top divided by the bottom. Now let's think about what we get on the left side over here. What is 10 divided by a third? No, that's 10 times a third. That's 10 divided by three. I want 10 divided by one third. That's a complex fraction. What do we do? Stay, change, flip. Stay, change, flip. So 10 divided by a third is the same as 10 times what? Three. What's 10 times three? 30. So what's 10 divided by a third? 30. Okay. Now, why does this division work? Well, look what happens over here. What's A divided by A? No. They divide out to give us what? <laughs> they divide out to give us, which is the sound that one makes. Yeah. They give us one. Okay. So they're gone. We eliminated a variable. And now what does the rule say over here with the Bs? When you're dividing and the basis are the same, what do you do with the exponents? That's when you're multiplying them. No. Thank you. Louder? We subtract them. Boy, we have forgotten a lot of information from the beginning of the year. Uh, negative 2 minus 2. Top exponent minus the bottom exponent. What's negative 2 minus 2? Negative four. Okay, good. Now, I want to solve for B. So to solve for B, all I got to do is raise both sides to the what power? What have we been doing? Four. Not four. We haven't been multiplying by the opposite exponent. We, not one-fourth, but negative one-fourth. That's the what of negative four? Reciprocal. You raise both sides to the reciprocal power. And why does that work? Let's see. Why does that work? What is negative four times negative one fourth? What's anything times its reciprocal? <laughs> one. It's one. So I get b to the first, which I'll put on the left side. I get b to the first equals 30 to the negative one fourth power. Now there's lots of different versions of 30 to the negative one fourth. That's the same as one over 30 to the positive one fourth, which is the same as one over the fourth root of 30. Ooh. Do we want it as the 1 over the 4th root of 30? Yeah. We do? No. 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 Not even on a dress-up day do I want to dress like that. This is the ugly irrational. It's the ugly irrational version. What about the 1 over 30 to the 4th? Do we want the fractional version? This is the ugly fractional version. We don't want the ugly fractional version. So... What I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep it as 30 to the negative one-fourth. Now, notice in the previous problems up above the two, uh, A and B, we actually found A first. We found the y-intercept first, and then we found B second. When you do the problems like this without the y-intercept given, you actually find the B value first, and then you find the A value second. So what do I need to do with this B value to find the value of A? Plug it back into either one of these. It doesn't matter which one we plug into, the top one or the bottom one. 
Whatever looks easier for you. Which one looks easier to you? I like the top one. I, I try to stay away from the fractions. I'm more comfortable with negative exponents than I am with fractions. So I'm going to elect to do the top one. So we'll just go ahead and plug into the top. We'll say so, that's the transitional word. We get 10 equals A times B to the negative second. And you see what I did in place of B? What did I put? I put parentheses in place of the B. Now I'm going to plug my B value in, which is 30 to the negative one fourth. 30 to the negative one fourth. And now I just got to solve for A. So I need to simplify first. I get 10 equals A. And what do I do with these two numbers right here? Multiply them. I'm raising a power to a power, so that's exponentiation. It turns into multiplication. What is negative a fourth times negative two? Positive half. Very good. Very good. All right. Now i got to solve for A. That's the same as the square root of 30. But I'm going to leave it as 30 to the one half. What would I need to do to 30 to the one half to get rid of it if it's being multiplied by A? How do I undo multiplying? Divide. So I'm going to divide both sides by 30 to the one half. So I get A equals 10 over 30 to the one half power. I divide both sides by 30 to the one half. Now I have a fraction, don't I? I got my 30 to the one half in the bottom. I don't like it in the bottom. So you know what I'm going to do for my A value? I'm going to bring it to the top. And when I do that, what, what does that do to the exponent? It makes it a negative. Good. So I get negative one half. Here is the pretty version of A. So now that I have my pretty version of B with a negative exponent, but a nice positive base, that's not a fraction. And then I got my pretty value of A. All I got to do is plug those back in, both of those, plug those both back in to my original template. So, again, a transitional word, f of x must equal a, which is 10 times 30 to the negative one half power, times b, which is 30 to the negative one fourth power, raised to the x power, so that's gonna be times x. Yeah, see what I did there? I went ahead and raised it to the x power just by multiplying those two together. Now you could stop right here. This is technically the answer. This is your A value, and this is your, your basis, nice value of 30. But is there something else we could do? Are y'all you, have double vision like I do? You'll see the 30s? I know you do. If you don't see two 30s there, you're, you're I don't want to factor them out, but can I combine them? I'm multiplying them, right? And the bases are both 30. They're the same. What does the rule tell us to do when we're multiplying and the bases are the same? What do we do with the exponents? We add them. So the 10 is out of luck, but he can just stay out there. And now we have 30 to the, and I'm going to put the X term first, negative one fourth X minus one half. And I'll put that in parentheses just to kind of keep the exponents all together. I added the exponents. Now, if I really, really wanted, I could factor out a negative one-fourth and put it into standard transformation form, but I'm not interested in sketching it like that. So I'm just going to leave it like this. Now, when you do these fun problems that are, that are more fun, you'll always be able to combine a portion of the A with the base, the portion of the B. You'll always be able to do this at the end, okay? So this would be your final answer right there. <clears throat> if you were doing a free response, I would expect to see that. If you were doing a multiple choice, that would be the answer choice. Lane, you want to stand up? I'll give you one more chance to keep your eyes open over there. I don't like you sitting in the corner. I don't want you sitting there anymore either. You're, you're, just, you're in a different world over there, okay? You need to be part of the class. Charge up tomorrow. Come charge. Sit at a desk. Say, stay awake. If you want to stay after class, I'd be happy to talk to you about it, too. All right. Any comments or questions on letter C? Okay. 
I'm not sure if I'm ready to set you loose yet on one by yourself. I think you'll need to see another one. Now that you have the gist of how to do those fun ones, let's do this one together here. Let's first of all see if it is um, exponential growth or exponential decay. Let's quickly plot it. Negative five, one eighth is going to be a low value, and four comma eight, that's going to be a larger value. So this should be exponential what? Should be exponential growth. Okay, do we have the y-intercept? We do not have the y-intercept. So this is the variety that's going to be more fun. Yay, more fun. So our template is y equals a times b to the x. Our template is y equals a times b to the x. And here we go. We'll say at the point, negative 5, comma, 1, 8, colon. That's the format that we use. That tells me, that tells anybody that's looking at your work, that you're plugging in this x and y into the template. So we get 1, 8 for y equals a times b to the negative fifth. You're just plugging in for x and y. And then we'll do right below there at the point 4, comma, 8. We do the same thing. We plug in an 8 for y. We plug in a 4 for b, uh, x, and we get that right there. And now if you want, you could draw that open brace, which groups them together. And now we have ourselves a system of equations. This is equation 1 at the top. This is equation 2 at the bottom. It doesn't matter if you do equation 1 divided by equation 2 or equation 2 divided by equation 1. It doesn't really matter. What do you all want to do? If I do equation 1 divided by equation 2, I'm going to have a fraction on the left-hand side. I'm going to have 1 eighth divided by an eighth. But if I do equation 2 divided by equation 1, it'll be more like the previous one. Let's do that. Let's do equation 2, and we'll divide it by equation 1. So on the left side, we get 8 divided by 1 eighth. And on the right side, we get AB to the fourth divided by AB to the negative fifth. So try if you have if you have something like this, try to always put your 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 whole numbers in the numerator and your fractional numbers in the denominator. That way you don't have fractions. Because what's eight divided by one eighth? Don't say one. Sixty-four. Because it's eight times the reciprocal of one eighth, which is eight. So eight times eight is sixty-four. So we get sixty-four. What happens to the A's on the right hand side? They divide out to give you 1, and we're left with b to the what power now? What does the rule say when we're dividing and the bases are the same? Subtract them. So it's 4 minus 4 minus negative 5. So it's 9. 4 minus negative 5 becomes 4 plus 5, which is positive 9. Very good. Now we'll raise both sides to the reciprocal power, to the one ninth power, and we get b equals 64 to the one ninth, which is the ninth root of 64. Is 64 a perfect ninth root? No. So I don't want to write it as the ninth root of 64. That's your yucky, yucky, gross, gross, irrational base. I'm going to leave it as 64 to the one ninth. Now, if you want to box that so that you can feel a sense of accomplishment, you can. We found the first of the two variables. Now what we do, we plug that back into either one of the original ones. You want to plug it into equation one or equation two? I like equation two. I stay away from the fractions if I can. So now I'm going to say, so there's your transitional word. We get eight equals eight times 64 to the one ninth power raised to the fourth power. And now we just simplify and solve for A. We get A, A times 64 to the 4 ninth power. And now I've got to divide both sides by 64 to the 4 ninths. So we get A equals 8 over 64 to the 4 ninths power. And when you look at that, you're like, yucky, yucky, gross, gross. I have a fraction, don't I? So I can leave the 8 in the top and bring the 64 to the top as long as I do well with this exponent. Make it negative. So now it's 8 times 64 to the 4 ninths. So there's your A value. As ugly as it is, we're keeping the base as 64, which is a nice whole number. All right. Now we just plug that back into your original template. 
We'll say so, and if you want to recall it f of x instead of y to fancy up the name, you can. f of x is equal to a, which is 8 times 64 to the negative 4 ninths power, times your base, which is 64 to the 1 ninth power, raised to the x power, which means you could just multiply it by x. Like that. Don't forget to multiply it by x. Some people leave that off. It's 64 to the 1 ninth raised to the x power, which becomes times x. That's your variable piece. All right, now, as I mentioned in the previous problem, you will be able to combine these at the end. So f of x should equal 8 times 64 to the, and we just add those exponents. And when I add them, I'm going to commute them, so I'm putting the 1 ninth first, and I get minus 4 ninths. And it looks like that. Now, that's as far as we went on the previous problem, because on the previous problem, I couldn't write 30 as a power of 10, so I stopped right there. But what do you notice about this? Can we keep going if we want to keep the fun going? Can we get another day in the Disney park? Can we stay one more day, Daddy? Can we play one more, one more day? Oh, yeah, I think we can. What do you notice about 64 and 8? Can you write 64 as a power of 8? It's 8 to the what power? 8 squared. Yeah, so let's put parentheses around the 64. Let's put parentheses around the 64, and we'll replace it with 8 squared. Now, what do I do here? When you raise the power to a power, what do you do with the exponents? You multiply. So if I work straight down, I get 8 times... 8 to the 2 ninths x, and I have to distribute, minus 8 ninths. And I'll put that in parentheses to show that it's the exponent. Now, why did we put the whole base in terms of 8? Because the a value is 8. So now I'm multiplying and the bases are the same. What do I do with the exponents now? No, they're multiplied, so we add them. And we can add like terms. I can add like terms. So I can add the 1 to the negative 8 ninths. And I get 8 to the 2 ninths x power. And then what is 1 minus 8 ninths? 1 ninth. Very good. So I, I get my final answer here to be f of x. Maybe it's the final answer. I don't know. Maybe we'll get to play some more. 8 to the 2 ninths x plus one ninth power. And there it is. I like that version. We could factor out the two ninths and put it into standard transformation form, but I like this. This is an awesome answer. This one simplified down quite a bit. And what's the base, by the way? Is it eight, which is growth, which is what we expected it to be? Yep, it's a power of 8. So there you go. These are like among my favorite problems. They're not only the more fun problems, they're among my favorite problems. Because look at all the delicious math that we get to do in there. We get to get our hands dirty. We get to like till the earth with our bare hands, right? We get to feel it. Is there a lot of potential for careless mistakes? Yeah. Should you be sloppy and careless when you write this out? No, you should be very careful and deliberate when you write it out, right? So practice the way you're going to play the game. What's the only rule of class? Care, right? And writing it down carefully tells me that you care. All right. Um, I don't know if we're going to have time to finish in the next four minutes this last one. So we'll save this for tomorrow. This is a modified exponential growth. It's called logistic growth. And if you remember COVID from a few years ago, anybody remember COVID, COVID-19, 2020? Woo! Diseases spread according to a logistic curve, modified exponential growth. Well, tomorrow we're not going to look at the spread of COVID. We're going to look at the spread of a rumor. Okay, it's a little bit safer to spread rumors than it is to spread communicable diseases. All right, but we're going to see why it's modified exponential, and we'll see... Um, what the rumor is. Don't read, don't read ahead. I don't want you spreading the rumor prematurely. Okay. Any questions on today?
What should what should be the first thing that you do when you get some free time today? You should go to the worksheet and practice these types of questions on your own so you can reinforce the process. All right. Reinforce the process. And the key, of course, is available so you can check to see if you're correct. Is the worksheet still due tomorrow? No, the worksheet will not be due tomorrow. We didn't finish the notes. So we'll finish the notes on Wednesday. The worksheet will be due when? Thursday. Yeah. Now we might have a quiz tomorrow. In fact, let's go ahead and say we'll have a quiz tomorrow. Let's quiz tomorrow over these types of problems. Quiz on Wednesday. Over tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah, tomorrow. We'll quiz. We'll quit. Yeah, we'll quiz and then we'll finish the notes. And then the worksheet will be the Thursday. That sounds like a good Wednesday. Quiz and finish the notes. I like it. Thanks, Patrick. Everyone say thanks, Patrick. Thanks, Patrick. Yeah.